uh, they'll start maybe doing more overtime because they've got mm -hmm. a little bit more work, Again. but they don't want to hire people yet. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, unemployment will continue to rise throughout this year. It uh, will. Um, unemployment is always the what we call a lagging indicator. It's the last thing to recover. Uh, and so if you look in our history, uh, um, this recession is like every other recession. You'll actually be in recovery and unemployment is still going up at the same time. Mm. And, and that, that, that's what always happens every, every cycle because there's, you know, not everybody, you know, not every company turns around at the same speed. Mm -hmm. Not every business is able to turn around. And so there's always a little bit of a lag uh, um, between when people get laid off and when they actually show up in the unemployment numbers. Yeah, and maybe the employer still has a little bit of fear of, well, let me just, you know, keep going on this. Like you said, you know, doubling up and having people put maybe a little more time in. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to hire because they want to make sure this is a real recovery and, and it's not a double dip. We're not going to do another one of those. Uh, um, I don't think we're going to see a double dip. I mean, if, mm -hmm. it, if actually, if you think about it, we kind of are in a double dip. We had the yeah. house, we had the tech bubble. And then, yes. that, then that bubble burst in 9-11, and then we had the housing bubble, and this is kind of the second dip after right. that one. So we kind of are in a big double dip for our, already. We don't want to do a triple one. No, we don't. <laughs> that, no, that's good dipping. for ice cream, <laughs> yes. not good for economies. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, we like triple dipped ice creams, but not, that's very good. So you think that, um, what do you think is going to help us get out of this? What, what is working? Well, you know, one of the things about Arizona is it's such a great place to live. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have to scrape the sunshine off our windshield this morning. You know, yes. I mean, we, every... <laughs> Everybody loves to, you know, and this whole yes, snowpocalypse that happened back east in the north. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that got a lot of people thinking, hey, I want to move out here where, you know, it, it's nice. That's, you know, we still have that intrinsic value. This is a great place to live mm -hmm. and work. Uh, um, the things that have been hurting us, which is housing and, and, and commercial uh, property, are actually becoming advantageous as the economy starts to recover. All those extra homes means housing prices are really low. So it's a cheap mm -hmm. place to, to move to. Mm -hmm. And same for businesses. Especially right now. Exactly. And so uh, uh, that will help us start to turn around. The thing about it is, is, is we've got to get our fiscal house in order as a state. Uh, um, if you go back in our history, the best thing for Arizona after they invented the air conditioner mm -hmm. was Gray Davis as governor of California. I mean, that guy scared more people out of California into yes. Arizona with the gray out, the brownouts, and all the I problems they had all there. That. Wow. You know, and you still have you still have people leaving and businesses leaving California, but they're not coming to Arizona anymore. Why is that? Right, yeah. Well, it, they're going to Texas, they're going to Colorado, they're going to other states because what do we hear in the national news? Wall Street Journal, Time, Newsweek, Arizona is the worst fiscal state right after California. I mean, who wants to I mean the, the state had to sell its capital and rent it back just to pay bills. I mean, who wants to make a long term investment in a state that's renting their own capital? Sure. So if we're going to get this turned around, we've got to get our own fiscal house in order as a state. We've got to balance our budget uh, because until we get our own fiscal house in order, you're not going to be able to attract people to come here. They're going to say, why leave California out of the frying pan into the fire, so to speak? Mm -hmm. You know, you, we've got to get that, and, and that's holding us back. So are we worse than California, or is California worse than us? Uh, are we kind of on the same per, path over there? Per capita, percentage-wise, uh -huh. Arizona has a worse budget deficit than California. Uh, California oh. is a bigger state, mm -hmm. so their problem is much larger numerically. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and, of course, California has the problem that, that their deficit is so big, it's actually larger than whole banks. Mm. <laughs> so they, they have fewer options as to how to solve it. Uh, um, but overall, and they're not doing very good no. either. <laughs> well, I, I see a lot of opportunity. I'm you still do? actually I'm really bullish about Arizona's long-term future, because if you think about it, you know we've got a great story to sell. We've got a great community. Uh, um, if we get our fiscal house in order, I mean I've got a, a plan where we, you know, basically cut up the state's credit cards, do uh, debt consolidation, and buy back the capital, balance our budget, have us. It would actually have a surplus next year. It'd be a little one. But still, mm. imagine that story. If we go and say, "Look, California, Arizona, two states both fiscally messed up. Mm -hmm. We've cut up our credit cards, balanced our budget, bought back our capital, and California's still a mess. Mm. We're going to look like a state. Hey, this is a state that's ready to grow. And, and once we do that, that's a story we can sell and start attracting uh, uh, investment. And that's the only way we're getting out of this recession. 
We've got to mm -hmm. fill those homes. We've got to okay. fill those office spaces. We, until we fill that, we're going to continue to stay in, in a, a, a slow recovery until those are filled. Wow, and that's what seems so hard, but until <clears throat> people are employed again and until they're getting the right amount of hours that they need, um, they're not going to be able to because I know that isn't, isn't uh, uh, people losing their houses still pretty high up there? They're we still have a very uh, high foreclosure rate here in Arizona, and that really uh, hurts our, our overall uh, process. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that is amazing. I, it's just so sad that I just know so many people that have lost their houses and they didn't want to, and a lot of them are doing these quick sales, but... Yeah, the, um, the, the short sales that are better than foreclosure. The short sales. It definitely, say, it definitely helps, uh, um, it keeps property values better. That's why we've done a lot it to does. try to help. It, well, when you have a foreclosure, then the home's empty and you know, you get weeds yes. and everything else, and that brings property values down yeah. all over. Doing a short sale actually protects the value of the homes around them much better. So mm -hmm. that's actually advantageous. We need to be encouraging that even more. Yes, and so um, how, how can the people do that? I mean, that maybe they're looking at a foreclosure. It's very good for them to do a short sale, well, right? The, the most important thing is, is if you're in trouble, ask for help quickly. Don't mm -hmm. wait uh, uh, um, until you're like on because the if you last wait too week. long, then then it, there may not be anything that can help you. There's a lot of different things that can be done if you move, move quickly. Short sales are not short mm -hmm. in time; <laughs> they're short because of the value they, yes. they still take a long time to process. And so, I mean, short sales can take three to six. I, I've heard as long as a year for a short sale to process. And so, uh, um, getting you know starting that process quickly can uh, 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 or sooner if you're in trouble the sooner you start the more time you have to work your way out of it mm -hmm. and uh, and they'll work with you if you ask for help and say look I've had something you know I lost my job or my spouse lost uh, their job and, and and you know we thought we could do all this but we really can't you talk to your creditors talk to those folks because they understand I mean you're not alone there are are literally millions of Americans who uh, who got themselves just upside down not necessarily of their own fault they just happened mm -hmm. to buy at so the height of the housing good. bubble you know yes. and, and and they expected to have a job and they got laid off I mean you know there are some people that speculated and did some risky things mm -hmm. but there are a lot of regular folks who are you know uh, good you know Christian hard-working folks right. that just got dealt a bad hand right you know and and but that's something to be ashamed out. of <laughs> right but, but don't don't just don't sit there and, and worry and fret uh, um, you know look for help you know look for th there are ways out of these things and we'll get through this right. we have been through this before Wow this is this is nothing new recessions happen they you right. know we have small recessions every few years and big recessions every 30 or so years mm -hmm. <laughs> and what's good is we're on our way out. The recession, you feel we're at the, that swoop level. And so that's good positive news. So thank you for that. <laughs> My goodness, this has been so good, Treasurer Martin. We really you. appreciate you being with us. And, and I want to go to the information so people know how to get you. Arizona State Treasurer, um, our Honorable Dean Martin, you can reach him at 602-604-7800. His um, uh, email is info at aztreasury.gov. His website is aztreasury.gov. And also check out that azcheckbook.com that he put together and you can keep up with what's happening. So thank you again. Thank you for all you're doing and for putting this azcheckbook.com together for us so we can keep an eye on our money. And we thank you for tuning in. We love you. We appreciate you. Go have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town brought to your home every day. So write Joy in Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.